finals in Seattle on Friday night. And hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, and welcome to Tucson, Arizona. You know, in many quarters, people think that Iowa has the stuff of champions and perhaps a good chance to get to the final four. But in order to do that, they're going to have to beat UNLV a little later on down the road. And today, upset-minded Texas, well, Ute University of Texas at El Paso, coached by the crafty Don Haskins. Texas El Paso has one bright, shining moment in their history. And it came in 1966 when the Texas Western Miners, as they were known then, beat Kentucky in the NCAA championship. Bobby Joe Hill with a big steal in a basket. And it was Texas Western beating Adolph Rupp, the Baron of the Bluegrass, and a shocking upset for Texas Western, now known as UTEP. And Don Haskins, the coach, talked about the difference between the two teams. This, is, uh, this group of kids, uh, they love to win, and uh, they'll fight back, and they'll scratch and claw, and uh, they'll never give up. They might get beat, but they'll never give up. And, that, you know, any time you have a champ championship team, uh, you have to have that. Tom Heinsohn, what kind of a game can we expect today? This is a contrast of two defenses, Dick. Iowa is like a sledgehammer. They hit you and hit you and hit you again with severe pressure, and they wait for you to knock yourself out. And the miners of UTEP, they go out and they have the most fundamentally sound man-to-man -man defense. You can't go one-on-one -on -one too easily against them. No easy passes will you make. And if you get the ball inside, you get surrounded. These two coaches are excellent coaches, and they one has won a national title, and the other one someday a lot of people think will also win one. Well, Haskins is a bear, and he brings ferocity and aggressiveness to his ball club. And Tom Davis is a student of the game. He's got a great theory that he's translated, that he's developed over the court. Tommy. UTEP must beat the toughest zone press in the country. They can't afford turnovers. They've got to make Iowa pay for the gamble of the press. They've got to make easy baskets off the fast break. Iowa must be able to score inside if they can't get the fast break against a great denied defense. UTEP controls, and it's Tim Hardaway, the point guard, who's made great strides as a point guard. Chris Vandal, the first basket of the ball game, the leading scorer for the Miners, averaging 13 a game. Iowa quickly back. And it's Lowhouse, the seven-footer. Missing a three-point shot, and he can roam out there, and he'll be an active seven-footer today. UTEP, a very effective fast-break ball club. Richmond, the center, out of bounds. It's Iowa ball, and this game may be quicker paced than we expected, Tom. Iowa tries to force you to play the pace game, and they throw that pressure defense at you for the UTEP in their familiar man-to-man -man defense, one of the best, but they get the pass inside to the baseline. Ball, the Hawkeyes. Pressure defense and pressure offense. And that's the name of Tom Davis's game. And he was successful with it at Boston College. He's got a better group here. Haskins says that uh, Iowa's defense is their best offense, but they've got some pretty good scorers here, like Lojas, Wright, and this man in particular, Roy Marble. If Iowa has a star, he's in. Roy Marble, averaging 14.8 in a steal. The first job is to inbound the ball. That's difficult enough with Lowhouse, the seven-footer, standing there trying to make you steal. Six to two, the score. Quinton Gates misses in a long rebound and a three-on-three. Three and Hardaway slowed up the break. Gable misses from the corner. Loose ball into the hands of Chris Sandel. And here comes Utah. Hardaway pushes it up all the way and gets the basket. It's six to four. The best sixth man in the country, Jeff Moe, a man who relishes that role. Also coming into the ball game is Ed Horton, number 25. There's Bill Jones, a forward, number 14. And Dick, this is like the Chinese army. They throw waves and waves of troops at you. They're not afraid. Jackson intercepts the inbound pass. Also in the ball game is Chris Blocker, and you're like him, a junior college All-American transfer for Utah. He's wearing number 23. It's eight to six in favor of Iowa. Blistering pace to start out here. Lohas, the seven-footer. This is in the rebound by Chris Sandel. Gets it out to Blocker. Blocker, great feed to Richmond, but he missed the layup. Now Iowa back. 
Jones goes up without the ball. And now it's three on one. And Hardaway's pass, no basket, as Richmond laid it in and a foul before the shot. And Tom, do you remember any game, college or pro, that started out at this pace? With that, you would have thought the Oklahoma game against Pitt was going to be fast paced, but this one looks like it's got to beat at least in the first few minutes. There's Al Lorenzen, a 6'9 junior from Cedar Rapids, who's a good shooter and a power forward, has been bothered by leg injuries in there now. So wholesale substitutions as expected by Tom Davis. And of course, he uses everyone and keeps everyone involved. Wave after wave after wave of troops. They try to kill you with numbers. Jackson and Hardaway, the backcourt. Blocker is in there up front. And Sandler shoots and hits. Lorenzen outside. Being guarded by Wayne Campbell, who's come in. He started the year. A three-point shot by Jeff Moe, who's the best three-point shooter in the Big Ten. And Iowa leads by five. Uh, press that time, handled nicely by UTEP. UTEP slowing it up, trying to get a good shot. Chief Jackson hits a three-pointer for UTEP. Jackson scored nine of UTEP's 19 points in overtime in their first-round victory over Arizona. 13-11 now, Hawkeye. Marvel has the ball knocked away. Great defense, helping defense by UTEP. That's what UTEP does so well. Great hands by their two guards. Blocker going in and gets the basket. Chris Blocker, who scored 12 off the bench in UTEP's first round win. Excellent ball handler now. The third man to help beat the UTEP press. Five in a row run off by UTEP. Horton misses the shot. Keith Jackson tries to save it. And it's going to be Iowa ball and another substitution. UTEP actually used six defenders practicing against Iowa's press yesterday, and this is the idea. Yeah, the first big problem is how to inbound the ball. Then you got to beat a big trap situation. Here's the first problem, inbounding the ball. Low house to seven-footer, and there's a man from Iowa standing right there where he thought his teammate was going to be, and they make easy baskets like that. You can't hardly see your teammates when Low House is surrounding the man taking the ball out of bounds. Not only that, Tom Davis camouflages the different defenses, too. As to where the openings might be, Haskins says this is one defense where they force you to put the ball where they want you to put the ball. Meanwhile, Iowa inbounding in a 13-13 game. Jeff Moe and B.J. Armstrong are the guards. Grant Lohas back in there. Gary Wright up front and forward, along with Kevin Gamble. And on the turnover, Keith Jackson lays it in to give UTEP their first lead since 2 to nothing. They will be a great steal by Gamble, a much bigger player than the Jeep. Terry Stallworth in the forecourt. Moe all over him. What a great spark that Jeff Moe is coming off the bench. And as we said, he likes that role of six man. Baseline, Quinton Gates with a fine move. Now there's a man I think is 14-0 in non-conference games. Moving pass right to Marble. They couldn't make it. Marble gets the basket. And UTEP inbound successfully. Gates goes up off the glass and Armstrong with a three-on-one, four-on-one break for Iowa, broken up by Hardaway. Great defense by Tim Hardaway. Both ends of the floor. He gets the basket. He gets the basket. Four-on-one fast break, and you steal it. That's a play. 21-19 Iowa. And another turnover. That time it was Stallworth who caused it. Nine turnovers by Iowa. UTEP uses their feet on defense in that man-to-man-to-man. -to -man -to -man. They move. There you see Hardaway just pick it off and steam up. I mean, he had them all that time. A normal thing is to run, turn your back and hide as they come at you. Instead, he changed it into two points. The, uh, Bill Jones, a 6'7 junior, misses a three. Blocker, four on one, now four on two. Good feed to Hardaway. Blocker, what a pass. Say a blocker, they say, is a flashy player, but I don't think he's that much flash. I think he does it just for with a big purpose in mind. And our sixth high of this first half at 21. Iowa 28 and 4 with five in a row. And Marble makes the tie. Roy Marble now with eight points 
is the game high score. But here's a three on one. Jackson comes back, ties it up for Texas. UTEP, and we'll have a chance to put him ahead. Once you beat the trap on the zone press, and you can get the ball into the middle, there's only one defender left. And UTEP is a three on, uh, with a three on one situation, a good fast break team. Now, you, you watch them get the ball up quickly, and immediately it's a fast break situation, and UTEP, a fast break team, says, hey, that's just what we want. Three on ones, we'll score. There's Wayne Campbell, who is the best offensive rebounder on this team. He comes off the bench, started earlier in the year, had knee surgery, and a pretty courageous comeback for Wayne Campbell, the junior out of New Orleans. So UTEP making Iowa pay. Jackson misses a chance for a three-point play, and there's Wayne Campbell, that offensive rebounder. We told you the UTEP ball. Kevin Gamble will come back. What a game, UTEP up by one.